So the first thing that I would like to do, and I'm going to slide over here, um, is I want you guys to take a look at this resume. I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to do it. Um, based off of the resume, I would love for you to put a hand in the air if you think that this person is hireable. Pay attention to their experience, their objective statement, their skills. Hireable to be in tech, generally speaking. If this resume came across your board, would you give this person a phone call? All right, so we have like one person. <laughs> I am happy to say that luckily this person actually did get hired, and this person is actually me. Um, so this is my resume from years ago um, before I started my career in the tech space. Um, I grew up in North Carolina. I'm a college dropout. Obviously, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a woman. Um, I'm black, I'm a Latina. I'm basically a triple minority. Um, so the barriers were pretty high for me to even break into the industry. Um, the only reason that I was able to is because someone was willing to take a chance on me. And one of the things that I want you guys to think about is, when's the last time you took a chance on someone or something? Um, I think when it comes to diversifying the pipeline, you really have to think about how can we kind of get out of the way that things have always been done and really challenge our thinking in terms of sourcing, attracting talent, um, and also retaining them. Um, in regards to kind of what the tech problem looks like right now. I've had a ton of conversations with hiring managers in the industry. Um, obviously, my background is in recruiting and talent acquisition. And it seems like the biggest issue to solving the problem is just deciding to fix it, right? I think there's a lot of solutions in the market right now, but people are afraid of that change. They're afraid of taking chances. Um, so one of the things I want to challenge you guys to do today is think about how you can actually be a catalyst for that change. Um, the first thing that people should be thinking of is just focusing outside of the valley. Um, so we're obviously here in New York, so I feel safe on saying <laughs> that New York is one of the best tech sectors in the country. Um, the issue with only focusing in San Francisco is that you're forgetting about the rest of America. Um, I heard a really surprising statistic last week. 70% of all African Americans live east of the Mississippi. Which means, if you're not thinking outside of San Francisco, then you're missing out on a really big market. Um, not only that, but you have to think of the coloring of America, the way that minorities are becoming the majority. Um, in order for tech companies to really flourish, they have to be thinking about their consumers. And consumers don't just live in San Francisco, they live everywhere. Second thing is that you, we don't just need engineers. So I would love anyone that knows how to code, can you stand up? I want you to continue standing if your job actually requires you to know how to code. All right, good. So that means most of you don't know how to code at all, and that's actually very reminiscent of what the tech industry looks like. Um, I want you to close your eyes and just think about tech companies if there weren't designers, if there weren't product managers, if there weren't digital marketers, if there weren't sales or marketing, you guys probably wouldn't even have jobs, assuming that you're working at tech companies in New York, right? Often I talk to people and they're like, oh, we're gonna get more women in, in engineering, we're gonna get more people color and engineering, but they never think about all the other different departments within tech. And as you guys know, all, there's so many moving pieces and they're all needed to make these companies operate the way that they do. Um, so I would challenge you just to think holistically about the landscape. You can't diversify the workforce and only diversify one part of it. This is kind of a pain point. Um, so gender and ethnic diversity. Um, I'm not here to be politically correct, so I would say often when people say, we're going to get more women into tech, that means we're not going to think about people of color at all, right? So how are you shifting the needle for the two and the three percent of the people that make up that organization, right? You can't just say, we're going to get more women into technology and not think about everyone else. Um, and that's just not people of color. That's everyone that's underrepresented in the space. Um, so going back to kind of thinking about the problem holistically, really challenge yourself in thinking, OK, what are our strategies? Granted, you can't have the same approach for women that you would have for people of color or any underrepresented group. Each requires their own unique strategies. But at the same time, you can't afford not to be thinking about everyone. 
Diversifying your recruiting tactics equals diversifying your workforce. Um, so being on the recruiting side, I often challenge people that are in talent acquisition to just think about what they're doing, right? Like you often people have like the top 10 schools or top 20 schools that they go to every year, but you can't say you're really challenging diversifying that pipeline if you're not changing the way you're sourcing and finding talent. Um, you also can't just go to two HBCUs a year and think that you've done your job either, <laughs> right? So really start to be creative about, you know, from a campus recruiting perspective, what schools are we going to? Are we working with community colleges? Are we working with boot camps? Like, how are we actually finding the people? What organizations are you working with to build diverse pipelines of talent? Um, I really want to put kind of a lot of pressure on people in recruiting because at the end of the day, they are the gatekeepers to the hiring managers within these companies. So if they don't want to change their mindset and their tactics on how they source and find talent, then the workforce is never going to change. And I'll leave you with this. DNI is everyone's job, not just one person. Um, so what I found uh, a lot of companies have done is just single out a, piece, a person of color or a woman and they've put them in a diversity and inclusion role, right? So it's just like, we hired someone, we did what we needed to do, we care about diversity. <laughs> but I'm sure all of you know, that person probably needs support, right? When I was a recruiter, we were always arguing with hiring managers and also employees to say, hey, everyone's a recruiter. Right? The employees within your company are supposed to be brand ambassadors for you. And the same way that we expect everyone to be a recruiter is the same way everyone should be focused on diversity and inclusion. It can't just fall on one person or one department. Right? We need people all the way from, I guess, from admins all the way up to the C-level to actually say, hey, this is a priority for us, and this is what we're working to do to actually make a change. Um, so that is my time, um, because I was told that I only had 10 minutes to share with you guys. Um, so I just want to leave you with those steps. I hope that you're able to take those back to your prospective organi organizations and really start thinking how you can start making proactive changes um, to really you know, change the way that the industry looks. Um, I have my email address at the bottom. If you're interested in speaking to me or learning more about what we're doing at 2020 Shift, I would love to talk to you. Um, so please reach out to me. Thank you.